Hi everybody, welcome back to Library Says. My name is Jamie and I am a public librarian with the lowdown on some fun, free, indoor activities you have access to with your library card. I know you are sitting on your living room couch right now, bored out of your mind because you're trying to be responsible and stay indoors and practice social distancing and not go outside and interact with the public because you're trying to prevent the spread of COVID-19. And that is a good choice, my friend. But what in the world are you gonna do for the next several days sitting on your couch? I mean, I feel like I have already worn out Netflix and I'm three days into my isolation period. So if you're a week, two weeks in already, what are you doing with yourself? So just in case you didn't know, your library card gives you access to all kinds of fun stuff you can be doing from your living room couch. So I'm talking about movies, TV shows, music, language learning, and if you're trying to be really productive, and you have access to all of it for free with your library card. Did you know that? If not, I'm gonna give you a little bit of information about all of these resources that you have access to. First off, you might say, well, I don't have a library card. This doesn't apply to me. Clicks out of the video. Wait, don't leave. If you live in an area with a public library, even if you don't have a card active right now this moment, chances are very good that that library library system has an online function to get you signed up for a library card completely free, very quickly on your library's website. Generally, these online library cards are temporary, just long enough to get you started so that you can get into a physical branch and pick up your physical library card. But fortunately, while the world is in chaos, a lot of library systems are extending how long their virtual library cards are lasting. For example, my library system has extended them for six months. So you don't ever have to step into a physical library building for six months and you have access completely access as though you have a physical library card to all of these resources. So first step, if you don't already have your library card, go check out your library's website and see if you can get signed up for one right now. I'll wait. Okay, you have your card? You're good to go. You should have your library card number and the PIN number, which could be anything. Your library should tell you what it is. If you have a library card, but you're unsure what your PIN number is, which is gonna function sort of like your password, then you can definitely check the library website. It usually will have a standard PIN. It'll be like your birthday or the last four digits of the library card number, something like that, that it will automatically be set to unless you've gone in and changed it yourself. That's a good place to start. Okay, so you have a library card, you have your PIN number, you're all set. Now what? I'm going to tell you about eight different services slash resources slash apps that you would have access to in my library system. And chances are very, very good. Your library system has some, if not all, and maybe even more than what's included on this list. First off, this one everybody basically knows about already. If you don't, this is easily the best one. It's called Overdrive. Overdrive is a system for eBooks and e-audiobooks, and it works just like your physical library, where there are a certain number of copies of each title. And if they're all checked out, you'll put yourself on hold and it'll alert you when the hold is in for you to check it out essentially. Overdrive acts as a website, so it's very easily accessible from any mobile device, from your desktop or laptop, but it also has an app. My suggestion is going to be to download Libby. Libby is the new and improved app for Overdrive. They are the same thing. I know it's a little bit confusing because the original Overdrive app still exists, but if you're gonna download one, download Libby. Libby is new and improved. It's so much more user-friendly, and it has a few capabilities that the original Overdrive app does not have, including adding multiple library cards. Now, maybe this is just me. Maybe this isn't a normal habit, but I have five different library cards from different library systems. Some people might ask, how in the world do you have multiple library cards? Don't you only live in one system, county, whatever? Yes, that is true. However, many places, including where I live, are heavy commuter areas where someone might live in one county, drive through two other counties to get to their job in a fourth county. And so because of that, all of the library systems, all of the counties around here have a reciprocity agreement, meaning that if you live in any of the counties or work in any of the counties, you can then get library cards for any of the other counties. That's information that should be on your library's website if it exists. If it does, then you can go sign up for more digital library cards right now. Now, why would you wanna do that? Don't they all give you the same thing? Not necessarily. Some systems pay for services and resources that other systems do not. As far as Overdrive slash Libby goes, your library will pick and choose which titles and how many copies of each title it purchases. The benefit of having Libby is that you can add all of your library cards, for example, I have five, and you can check each different library library, all within one app. You don't have to log in and out of each account. They're all connected to your one app. You have one loan shelf and you have one holds shelf. Let's say I'm looking for the Starless Sea. I can check each of the five libraries and put it on hold. Let's say it is available in all five libraries, but maybe one of them, there are only five holds on it. And one, there are only eight holds on it. And so I put holds on both of those copies just to see which one moves faster and which one I can get. So I have two holds on the same title and whichever one comes in first, that's the one I'll get. That's the benefit of having multiple cards 
in this context. Overdrive slash Libby has easily the best selection of ebooks and e-audiobooks you're gonna have access to on any platform. It's gonna have the newest, it's gonna have the most popular, and it's gonna have a pretty good selection of back titles. So if you're only going to download one resource that I tell you about today, it should be this one. And it does have an app that you can download for both iOS and Android. The second one on this list is Hoopla. This is another one that most people have some sort of working knowledge of. Hoopla is great because there's no waiting, there are no holds, there are unlimited copies of anything that you can find on Hoopla. So you find something you want, boom, it's yours. But there are also some drawbacks that Libby and Overdrive do not have. Hoopla has more than just eBooks and the audiobooks. It also has graphic novels and comics, which are in full color. It has full musical albums, episodes of TV, and full length movies. Depending on where your library card is from, you'll have a certain limit of checkouts per month. So my library system, normally it's six items a month. It can be whatever, but only six per month. However, because of the current situation, a lot of systems are bumping up their limits and paying for more for you, the patron, to have more access during this time. So my library has bumped the limit up from six to 10. Depending on what you check out, there are different checkout periods. So like books, it's gonna be three weeks. Graphic novels, it's gonna be two weeks. Music is one week. So it just depends on what you check out, but you'll be able to see when it's due back when you check it out. There is also an iOS and Android app for Hoopla. And the fun thing for this is there's also an app you can download for Roku or Fire Stick or whatever you have for that. So if you download a movie or a TV show, you can watch it on your TV. <laughs> All right, the third resource on this list is Canopy. This one's fun. It's new, at least for my library system, but it's all movies. So think Netflix, but it's not, it's not Netflix. <laughs> it's not Netflix and it doesn't have TV. It's just movies. But what kind of movies does it have? So it has a pretty good selection. It has a lot of award winners, a lot of indie films, a lot of documentaries, and then it has some random gems, popular items that maybe you were looking for. Some other great things about Canopy is it has an entire kids section, which is fantastic. And it has access to free great courses, which are college level video courses that normally you have to spend money on. So right now the e-audiobook version of them is on sale on Audible for $6.95 each, but you have access to the video version of them for free on Canopy. And I'm talking any subject you could be interested in. History, fine arts, economics, check it out on Canopy. It's pretty good stuff. And this is another one that has an app available for Roku or Fire Stick or whatever you use so that you can watch the videos you check out from home. The fourth resource I wanna talk about is Freegal. So if you've never heard of Freegal, it's because you're a book person and this is music, but it's still fun because you're gonna get bored stuck in your house. So you might wanna mix it up with some new music. Freegal is a music resource that gives you unlimited streaming of its 15 million songs 24 seven. In addition, you get five free downloads to keep every single week. Now it isn't all the best, the brightest, the newest, the most popular, but it, like I said, has 15 million songs in its bank. So it's still worth checking out, free music, free music to keep. And it again has an app for iOS and for Android. The fifth resource on my list is lynda.com. Now I know you're thinking, um, this isn't a library resource. Everybody's heard of Lynda, what are you talking about? Many, many public libraries pay an exorbitant fee for you, the patron, to have free access to lynda.com. Did you know that? Now I'm not guaranteeing your library has access to this, but it is a possibility. So it's definitely worth taking a look and seeing if you do in fact have free access to something that normally you'd have to pay a monthly subscription for. If you haven't spent any time on lynda.com. It's a website that has professional level video classes on tens of thousands of subjects. So animation, video editing, entrepreneurship, web design, photography, cooking, languages, anything you're interested in, I guarantee it's got something for you. The sixth resource I wanna tell you guys about is RB Digital. This one's fun because it's magazines. So if you're a magazine person or you like to mix up magazines with your books, check out RB Digital. It also has an iOS and Android app and it provides current issues and backlist for hundreds of different magazines. You get to download whichever magazine you're interested in in, in full color and flip through just like it's a physical magazine. Not only that, but you can also subscribe to a magazine that you're interested in and each time a new issue is released, it'll notify you and pop up in your app. Just like getting magazines delivered to your home, except they won't have germs on them and they're free. For example, I was scrolling through it this morning and I found Cosmo, GQ, National Geographic, The New Yorker, a bunch of cooking and design magazines. If you're interested in it or you think, oh, I could be interested in that, go check it out. What are you doing? Go do it right now. Number seven on my list is for the kids. 
kiddos. And this is Book Flicks. This is actually a resource created by Scholastic and it pairs video storybooks with ebooks and basically just fosters a love of learning, a love of reading for kids. And it adds a little something extra because like I said, there are video storybooks. So they feel like they're watching TV. They're getting a little bit more out of it. And I've always been a big proponent of using other forms of media as a gateway to love reading. If you're interested in a certain video game, maybe I can find you a book that interests you in the same way that video game does. And I feel like this resource is doing that same thing for little kids. If they find something they're interested in watching, then there are also books that they can be reading on the same subject. All right, and the last resource on my list, number eight, is language learning. So I know you're thinking, um, hello, I'm off work or I'm already working from home. I don't wanna be learning languages. <laughs> I'm just giving you this as an option. You don't have to do anything you don't wanna do. But you know, if you wanna be a little bit productive while trapped in your house, maybe learn a language you've been putting off learning. So I'm just gonna give you some examples of a couple different resources you might have access to from your library, but your library also might have a different language learning resource. So check it out. So two that I'm gonna talk about are Mango Languages and Rocket Languages. They both have their pros and cons. Both of them have dozens of different languages you can learn from beginning to advanced. You basically just tell them what language you wanna learn and what level you are, and they will tailor lessons to you and your ability. You'll hear people speaking the language. You can work on your accents. It's good stuff. Why pay for Rosetta Stone when you have access to something like this for free? All right, guys, that's it. That's all I'm gonna talk to you about today. Is that an exhaustive list of what you have access to for free with your library card? Not even close. So if any of this sounds interesting, go look at your library's website. I guarantee there's a page that just scrolls and scrolls and scrolls of all the resources, all the apps, all of the databases you have access to for free. I'm gonna say that one more time. For free with your library card. If you have any questions about any of these resources, I am happy to answer them. Happy to talk about these all day long. I do it professionally anyway. I hope you guys get something out of this one. I hope you're all staying happy and healthy and safe inside your houses and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye.